Okay, here are my slides that uh, explain more about balancing of interest as we talk about um, the part two exceptions to prior restraint, when prior restraint is allowed. Okay, I'm back, and these are the um, pitfalls of trying to lecture with whooping cough. So the characters of libel are, first of all, that it defames somebody. In other words, it harms somebody's reputation. Um, so keep that in mind. Second characteristic is that it identifies somebody. And if we were in class, I'd go through this whole uh, sort of role-playing with you to show you what I mean. For example... Identification, we often think about as being by name. But what if some, if one of, if, what if one of you said, oh, you know, that journalism teacher, um, one of the journalism teachers at Skyline College, um, she is an alcoholic. Uh, you might at first glance think, oh, well, you haven't identified anybody, so you haven't, you know, you haven't run the risk of uh, having libel. But there's one problem. Can you guess what it is? It's that there's only one journalism teacher at Skyline College, and so clearly you'd be talking about me. The next characteristic is that the work is published, and this is another area where I like to play around with you guys when we're in class talking about this, because this we often think about as being, and it usually refers to publishing something in a newspaper or you know, uh, broadcasting something on radio um, or writing something on the Internet. But it can be, technically, me writing a note, you know, about one of the students that day wearing a hat. Let's say one of you came to school with um, a hat on, and I just jotted down, you know, uh, the guy with the hat is a cocaine addict. And I threw it across the room ostensibly to get it, you know, into the garbage can, and um, one of you intercepted it, opened it up, and read it out loud, or even read it to yourself. Technically, you've now, um, I've now published that because somebody else has read it. Um, that's not to say that, the, that a person suing for libel would be successful with that, but it certainly does, um, in the strictest sense of the word, uh, meet the, uh, the characteristic of being published. Now, there's one more thing here that has to be a part of this in order for this to be libel which is that the, whatever you're claiming is false. So if you said to somebody, oh, you know, that Nancy Catherine Beagle, she's a real alcoholic, you've defamed me, you've identified me, even if you just refer to me as the journalism teacher, and if you write that in the Skyline View, now you've published it, or if you yell it across the, the hallway, you know, as everybody's leaving their class, you've published it. Um, and as if I'm an alcoholic, you're okay, but... I'm not an alcoholic, I'll say that now, and so it's false. So I could successfully sue you for libel. Now here are some of the defenses against libel, and you need to know this because, um, again, you guys are all, these days, you know, you're publishing. Here are your defenses. The first and foremost defense is provable truth. Now, the reason I say provable truth is, let's say uh, you're the person, the the one in the classroom who is published in the Skyline View that Nancy Kaplan Beagle is an alcoholic. It's not good enough for you to be like, I just know she is. I know in my heart, you know, she's a drinker. Um, that's not good enough. You have to have provable truth. You have to find me at a bar, you know, passed out on, on my bar chair um, and take a photograph of it. You have to have legitimate proof that, uh, that what you've said is true. The second thing is a little bit more complicated, although not too bad, and it's called privilege. I think I'm going to, at the end of this, draw you a chart of this, um, but let me talk about it now, and then you can go and look at the chart and see how this fits. Absolute privilege is, um, it, it means that you cannot be sued for libel because you are in what I like to call a sacred arena where you can basically say anything you want about anybody and not have uh, not be sued for libel. Here are some of the, the sacred arenas. Um, the floor of Congress, uh, a city council meeting, anywhere where these official government meetings are being held like that, um, a court. Now, if you, if you call somebody an alcoholic and they're not in court, you might have, you know, uh, you might have other things that happen to you in the courtroom. 
contempt of court or other things like that. But it won't be libel. So what this means is if I'm a senator and I'm on the, the floor of the Senate and we're debating something and I say, you know, my distinguished colleagues, um, Senator Smith um, has a bill before Congress and he says it's an excellent bill, but I want to tell you not to vote for it because it's a terrible bill, and he cheats on his wife. And why would you trust a guy who cheats on his wife? Now, I've defamed the guy. I've identified him. I've published it because I've said it to other people. And let's suppose for a second that the, the good senator is, in fact, very um, committed to his wife and has not cheated on her. I have now technically committed libel, but I'm in a sacred arena, and that senator cannot sue me for libel. Now, if a journalist is there and writes about this, that Senator, you know, Catherine Beagle flipped out and called Senator Smith an, an adulterer, um, that journalist may have privilege as well, may be defended against a claim of libel for writing that in the paper. Um, it's called qualified privilege, though, because in general, if a journalist reports about something that happens in one of these sacred arenas, um, the journalist is probably covered as long as he or she doesn't embellish it. So if I went on as the journalist to say, you know, Senator Catherine Beagle was called an adulterer by Senator Smith, and uh, there's good reason to believe that she is an adulterer because we saw her hanging out, um, you know, in the bar yesterday, then I start to run as a reporter the risk of being no longer covered by qualified privilege. Now, I want you to also reflect for a minute on why we have privilege at all. And if I were with you, I'd make you give me the answers. But I'm going to tell you right now that we have these sacred arenas because it's so important to democracy that we have some places where free and unfettered debate is allowed. And that we don't want anybody to feel like they might say something that will um, then cause them to be sued for libel. It needs to be that open, that we're willing to let these situations, these sacred arenas exist. Now again, there may be other ramifications. A senator who falsely accuses another senator of drinking or being a cocaine addict or an adulterer will probably begin to look a little weird and may not get um, reelected or maybe talked about in a, in, um, in a, you know, get poor publicity. So, but we do have this as a sacred arena. Another thing, and this is something I think particularly um, relevant to you guys, is something called fair comment and criticism. And if there's nothing else that you listen to about this part of the lecture, really pay attention to this. Fair comment and criticism means that we get to have an opinion, and we get to talk about our opinion. So let's say you're writing on Yelp. You have a right to say, you know, um, Krispy Kreme donut um, is the worst donut I've ever had. It was absolutely tasteless. You have a right to write that. You um, have a right to say, you know, my hairstylist did a terrible job on my hair. All of that's okay. What you cannot do is step over into something that's no longer opinion, but is an area that could be perceived as factual. So you can't say Krispy Kreme donut is terrible because um, they break, um, you know, they have all sorts of um, uh, ways in which they don't comply with health standards. That's something that's either true or not true. So if you've said that and it's not, you know, and it's proved to be not true, now you've libeled, um, potentially libeled Krispy Kreme. So um, let, let me say it again um, against a person. So for example, if you can go to a restaurant and say that the chef is terrible, doesn't know how to cook, but you can't say um, he, his food is terrible because he is an alcoholic. Also, we have the right to criticize our government. So you you can also have opinion pieces where you talk about politicians and policies and stuff like that. That's all fine. There's one more thing. <clears throat> if somebody puts themselves in the public eye, either by being a politician or a celebrity or by other means putting themselves in the public eye, then <coughs> they are a little bit more fair game um, to be talked about. And in their case, they have to not only show that somebody has defamed them, identified them, published information about them that's false, they also have to show that there was actual malice 